Welcome, 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 everybody. Hey, guys, how's it going today? Welcome. Today is Halloween. Happy Halloween, October 31st, 2023. Today, I am joined by Mr. Felix. Woo-hoo. Felix is a good buddy of mine. And Felix is here today to talk about OPM Mastery. I love this. OPM Mastery is a phenomenal cool it's a phenomenal business strategy felix is going to obviously fill you guys all in on the specifics of it um but i'm just happy to have him here um i love using business credit in fact i use business credit every day in my business i use business credit to buy houses i use business credit to rehab houses i even use business credit sometime to fund my marketing as well as my payroll, my office overhead. Not every month is is you know rainbows and sunshine. Some months are great. Some months we make six figures, guys. I mean, we do pretty well, yeah. right? Real estate's amazing. But sometimes, you know, you can go into a lull and you may have a lot of money pulled out of the business and you may need some extra capital. And that's what's so great about OPM. So without further ado, Felix, Thank you for being here. Welcome. I'm grateful for you. How the hell are you, brother? Good, good. Thank you for having me today. And happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Halloween, man. (laughs) Well, fill us in. First and foremost, what in the hell is OPM Mastery, dude? What is this all about? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been in the whole credit and business funding space uh, for quite some time now, right? And a lot of you know, small things that we noticed over the past years is the type of clients that we work with, a lot of people, they don't tend to have that, you know, next level thinking when it comes to effectively leveraging credit, rather it's to scale your real estate business, rather it's just to have additional reserve doing downtime, like, you know, what's going on in the economy and really how to effectively take it to the next level, right? Um, so that's why I'm here today. I do real estate investing myself, mainly, you know, some Airbnb stuff. So love it. Great cash flow, great assets to invest in. And it's not only limited to what you can invest into too, right? Business credit have a lot of flexibility and we are in one of the greatest financial system across the world. If you go to China, if you go to other countries, you don't have access to what we call 0% business credit, meaning if David was the bank and he lent me money for like a hundred thousand, we can actually get those for zero percent interest and pay him back the principal. But what we invest in is where we make our spread, our margins on, right? Uh, so today we're just going to talk about the principle of the strategy, really understanding different you know methods that we utilize, how you guys can start using it today, and then we'll just lead that into any you know Q and A's afterwards too. Sweet, I'm ready to roll, baby. Let's do it. Cool. Awesome, guys. So got a very special pre- presentation for everyone. And then I'll make sure to also drop this link um, as well. But basically doing this presentation today in partnership with the Real Estate School. Again, thank you, David, for having me. Um, is really understanding how can we start from the basic principle of obtaining some sort of funding right off the bat. I want to get you guys some sort of results from today's call. You know, I'm taking 30, 40 minutes of your time. So I just want to make sure my goal today is to give you guys as much value, as much understanding possible from what I've been doing for a lot of clients and then for myself as well, right? Um, so understanding the basic principles of, you know, where your personal credit score needs to be at, how to structure your business correctly, how to start applying, and then what's kind of the methods behind and the thinking that it requires in the first place, right? For sure. Cool. Awesome. So today's topic is going to be implement our funding system frameworks to secure additional $150,000 to $350,000 through not only business credit cards, but business line of credit as well, right? But starting with the understanding of business credit cards, because those are the easiest to get approved for in the first place, right? So a lot of you guys will fall under the stage one funding here, which is primarily, hey, you guys are just starting off with your business. Um, You guys probably have decent credit and you want to take advantage of what we call business credit cards. 
The reason why you guys want to start separating your personal from the business, meaning, hey, if you started a business, a lot of times we tend to use our personal cards, is because of the risk involved, right? Do you guys want to get the client for a car loan just because you use a personal credit card to invest into real estate and that utilization, that factor start reporting to your personal credit and your score drop drastically, meaning anytime that you apply for any sort of car loan, additional personal credit cards, or even a mortgage, the interest rate is going to be high. No, we would never want to put ourselves in that situation. So understanding the basic rule of business credit card number one, they don't report to a personal credit report, right? That's a very key information right there because that allow us to think creatively, that allow us to take a little bit more risky investment strategically. And number three, we're mitigating risk of our personal credit being damaged, right? So for us, we're going to start here. How can we sort of like position ourselves to apply for possibly business credit cards Maybe some personal credit, if you need to build your personal credit a little bit more, it's by opening more accounts. Sometimes it's necessary, but how do we transition that fully under kind of like the frameworks that we use? And that is starting with what we call stage one funding, right? So the basis behind why leveraging OPM business credit to create wealth is such a key standard um, that I feel like a lot of real estate investors should understand and a lot of business owners that are starting out should understand is because number one is little to no risk, right? Um, some of the partner lenders, some of these banks that offer what we call unsecured credit cards, meaning if you do default on it, if you can't pay it back while it doesn't report on your personal credit, it might, yeah, the only thing that's going to happen is, you know, your personal credit is going to be damaged a little bit right? In terms of you defaulting on these business credit cards, they're not going to go after your assets. They're not going to go, it's not secured, meaning you have, you don't have to put up any sort of collateral. So that really mitigate and minimizes your risk because as you, as you can see, business loans or SBA loans, on the other hand, if you're trying to acquire those for real estate purposes, they're always going to ask you to put up your title of the company or, you know, you know, your assets, and then also your real estate property as collateral, meaning if you do default, they're going to come after your assets to recoup whatever uh, debt that you have remaining, right? So by understanding business credit cards specifically, that sort of product is unsecured. It gives you a little bit more, you know, um, leverage and then also kind of mitigate your risk on that end. Number two. This is the only product that offers 0% interest. Meaning again, if I, the bank and David asked me to borrow 150,000, as long as his personal credit is up to the standard that I want, and as long as his business structure correctly, you're able to effectively, you know, as a bank, lend you that 150,000 without any sort of interest being paid, right? So it really comes down to how you position yourself strate strategically on the personal side, how you structure your business right off the bat, right? It's basically free money. If someone gave me 150,000 today, I can put it all into treasury bills, earn 5% nowadays and get 5% on that spread, right? For example, real estate, you guys can invest that and the compound interest and also the interest that you make on that money plus the investment, the asset that you acquired from free capital just gives you the opportunity to really scale at an exponential rate as long as you do it smartly and as long as you mitigate your risk properly, right? Number three, business credit, right? And actually doesn't report to your personal credit report. Again, going back to one of the foundation, understanding, hey, business credit, as long as I use it properly, as long as I'm making the minimum payments, it's not going to reflect on my personal credit report. So it's not going to damage my personal credit whatsoever. And then number four, this is my favorite one, it's really building that credibility um, by building a track record of your performance on the business side, right? And that ultimately helps you build a relationship and get exposure with other lenders that allows you to renegotiate different rates. Just like how you diversify investments, you also want to diversify your banking relationships when it comes to other banks that you finance with. Because the more banks, the more you know, network, the bigger the network that you have allows you to negotiate different rates between the different products that you apply for. And then last but not least, this is also one of my favorite is I never pay a single dime on travel in the past few years. So it's like how David is reinvesting a lot of his you know, capital and using business credit card to pay for marketing expenses. He's collecting all of these points. 
some of the business credit cards he signed up for has sign up bonuses, right? So that's free money right there based on the amount of money that you spend on these business credit card, right? So as long as you understand what the travel game is like, how you convert those points that you get from these business credit card on your daily business expenses, you can build up a portfolio of points that you can leverage to travel for free with your family and whatnot, right? So understanding that just, you know, it, it really enhances your lifestyle as well. The basic requirements, so we'll start with the basic requirements to pretty much apply for any sort of like business credit cards or just personal credit cards at 0% interest to really take advantage of this framework is by following these, um, these basic principles that you should need on your personal credit. Number one, you want to make sure you have a 700 plus FICO score, right? And note how I mentioned FICO score. FICO score is literally what the lender is going to be using to pull your credit in terms of there's different FICO scoring models out there. You guys might have heard of like the FICO 8 score. The FICO 8 score is specifically what the lender is going to use to base off of their underwriting decision on how much you get approved for. Some people, they get confused with the score that they see on Credit Karma because that score on Credit Karma isn't exactly the one that the lender is going to pull. So in order to get an accurate overview of where your score might be, you want to make sure you go to apps like myfico.com, sign up for you know one of their pay plans or go to experian.com, do the free trial, but you get an accurate view overall on your credit report and then most importantly, your score where you're currently standing at. You want to make sure that you're under 30% average utilization. I spoke with a lot of banks, you know, across the nation. A lot of them tend to, you know, tell me this data point being under 30%, meaning if you have $10,000 available credit to you under your name, you want to make sure you're less than 30%, you less than 30% usage on that because it shows that you're not really in need of credit. Therefore, they're willing to give you more credit in that case, right? And then last but not least, I recommend having anywhere between two to five relationships, meaning it can be with different banks that you have a car note on, it can be different banks that you have a mortgage on, different credit card accounts with different banks. The more relationships that you have, the more leverage that you have in the, in the meantime, right? Going back to your network is your net worth. It's sa the same principle applies in the financial world. The more relationships that you have, the more the banks are willing to work with you because they see a seasonal track you know, track record of the different um, performance of how you handle these accounts. And then last but not least, if you guys really want to apply for only business credit cards, it is recommended that you have a six month minimum age in your business, right? And the reason why is because businesses in a five-year trajectory, 80% of them tends to fail, but they use the one year or six month mark as kind of like a benchmark to see, you know, how... Yeah, if you're going to be staying in business for the long haul, right? So when we break down the different credit factors of what makes up the credit report, there are like, you know, six different factors. We're going to focus on, um, you guys already know what credit utilization is. You know, the more that you use your credit, the lower that your score might be impacted in this case, right? Your payment history is pretty high, meaning um, dependent on your track record or how long you've been using credit, that would definitely, you know, speak volume to the banks because I I always use the analogy of like, okay, the credit report a and a college transcript. When you take your college transcript to an employer, what they want to see is a track record of classes that you are actually on time, that you're actually attending 100%. They don't want to see you missing any classes. They want to also make sure that the class that you're taking is applicable to the type of job that you're applying for. And in this case, right? It's applicable to the type of product that you're applying for as well, right? So the, at the end of the day, what I'm saying here, the more accounts, more credit card accounts you have on the personal side, it shows that track record as, you know, as compared to how many classes that you're taking in college, it gives you that track record of how experienced you are as a bar or as a, you know, someone that's going to the workforce, right? Here's a little trick. I know I'm you know, going through this pretty quickly. If you guys have any questions, make sure to save it towards the end, right? I'm just trying to give you guys all the little tips, the little hacks sure. that I can right off this call in under 40 minutes. But number one, what you guys want to do is go to your credit karma and then click on those individual accounts. 
This is sort of the dates that you guys want to start documenting on a spreadsheet, knowing, hey, for example, Apple credit card in this example, they report every every month on the 30th, meaning as long as I pay off the balance, it's going to report that I have you know, a zero balance or less than 10% overall as compared to my what my credit limit is. There are a lot of instances where we see clients or other people that we work with where they're just like, hey, I paid off all my credit cards, but on Credit Karma or one of these credit reports, they're still indicating that I have a full 100% balance or utilization as compared to my credit limit. It's the reason for that is because of when that account reports to the credit bureaus. So each account that you have, whether it's American Express, Bank of America, Chase, if you log into Credit Karma, it will tell you the dates that it reports to the credit bureaus, meaning whatever status of that account is on that specific date, that is what information and data they're going to send over to the credit bureau to reflect what your credit score is in the meantime. So it's important to pay attention to this date, which is your reporting date, as compared to what your payment due date is in those individual accounts. Just because Apple Card might tell me, hey, my balances is going to, I need to pay off my balances on the 14th, I will still pay off the balances, but I'll also make sure my balances are low on the 30th because that's when they actually report to the credit bureaus. So that's how you kind of maintain a steady credit score over time and not and even though you might be using majority of the credit limits that you have, knowing this specific date allows you to understand when's the best time to pay it off so your credit score wouldn't take a hit, right? So that's a quick little trick for you. That's a great trick. Yeah, I love that. I just made a payment on my card right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Taking action right now. That's right. So I want you guys to do the same. All right. Here's another cool trick that I like to do. So before we go into like getting funding, what I mean by funding is applying for eight to 10 credit cards in the same given day. And the reason why is because sometimes we're able to combine inquiries within the different accounts that we apply for. And you tend to have a higher probability of getting, you know, large limits approved and more approvals by applying for all of these business credit cards or personal credit cards in a given day, right? So normally what we do for clients, we submit eight to 10 application of the top 10 banks that we pick out for them, the top 10 products that we know with 100% confident that they are going to get approved based on the type of personal credit and their how their business structure coming into this, right? So in order for you guys to really prepare for funding, I will recommend, hey, with all the current accounts that you have, what I mean by current accounts, all of the current revolving credit card accounts that you have, I would, just request for a soft pull credit limit increase, right? And I will only do that credit limit increase under the con contingency that it's gonna be a soft pull. Meaning if I request with Citi on a personal credit card from 5,000 and I wanna to request to get up to 10,000, I wanna make sure to double check with the banker to see, hey, is that gonna impact my personal credit? First and foremost, are you gonna pull from my personal credit report? If not, then I wanna move forward with this request to see how much of an increase I can get on my current cards, right? And the reason why is because that will expand your denominator of how much credit limit is available to you. So if you use a certain amount, it will lower the percentage and therefore that plays a big, you know, factor in how they calculate your credit score, right? Totally. Well, oh, no, that makes perfect sense. If yeah. you have a bigger limit, guys, and you, you know, if you only have a $10,000 limit, and you need 10 grand, you're going to be a hundred percent. That's hundred percent. If you have a hundred thousand yeah. dollar limit and you need 10 grand, you're, you're barely scratching the surface there. 10%. Exactly. So, you know, most of my cards are anywhere between forty and a hundred thousand dollar limits at this point. Yeah. You know, so if I need ten grand, it doesn't even affect my credit very barely any. Yeah. So it definitely gives you more spending power. Number one. Number two, it lowers your utilization because now your denominator increases is kind of like diluted, right? As compared to someone that has a 10K monthly expense, but they want to have 10K available, they're a hundred percent utilization. And usually hundred percent utilization on a credit report is a 70 point. 70 point drop on your credit score but let's just say person b has a hundred thousand available credit limit but the same expense ratio at ten thousand that's only ten percent credit utilization so that's not even going to drop your score at all right yeah 
And then next up, I recommend paying down your balances under 30%, 25% will be ideal, right? Across all your accounts. You also want to make sure that you go into each individual accounts that you have and make sure you update your income. Because normally by updating your income, you will automatically get a credit limit increase. So sometimes you will see your bank giving you credit limit increases on current credit cards without you asking for it. It might be a possibility because you updated your income, you're in a better financial situation. Therefore, they want to lend you more credit, right? So banks like to give you money when you're seeking when you're not really seeking for it. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, when you need it, it's hard to get it, guys. When you don't need it, they're going to give it to you. I mean, yeah. I don't even know what the rule is there, but like, just think about it though. If you're desperate, you're not, they don't really look very lendable. Yeah. Right? But if you're like, I don't even need any money from you guys. Then they're going to be like, are you sure? Here's a bunch of it. So, you know, the best time to get credit is not when you need it. It's when you don't need it. So when you mm -hmm. do need it, it's available. Exactly. Love it. And then last but not least, I will recommend setting automatic minimum payments all across all your accounts. Now, keep in mind the keyword is minimum, meaning you don't have to actually make the full payments, but you want to set this on autopilot. And what that basically show or pretty much present to the bank is that you are a seasoned borrower, you're a responsible borrower, you want to make sure you make all of your payments on time. While it might not be in full, you're still making the minimum balance right payments on those accounts and that would mitigate you from having any sort of late payments because one late payment on your credit cards is going to drastically drop your score by 60 to 80 points it really depends right so i see a lot of instances where people have an 800 credit score but with one late payment it drops down to 690 and that kind of like take away all of their opportunity to apply for you know business card cards at zero percent interest all right so these are just four little tricks that you guys can start taking today, updating your income, setting automatic minimum payments, paying off your existing balances, requesting for offers with the different banks, and then making sure to ask for credit limit increases as long as it's a soft pull and it doesn't affect your personal credit. All right. So now we're going to transition into why stacking business line of credit and business credit card simultaneously as you scale um, is a great opportunity for you guys to really expand quickly. Is number one, liquidity and access, right? Um, once you guys build up your business credit portfolio, once your business reaches the two-year mark, you can start applying for business line of credit. It works pretty much like a HELOC, like a home equity line of credit, right? Uh, but basically what they would do is they would give you based on what you get approved for, they will open up a business checking account, deposit that money into it, and then you can start using it to, you know, either invest in real estate or invest back into the company and whatnot. But it's liquid reserve that you have access right away, right? And then you wouldn't get charged any interest on it once you start pulling money out of it. The way that we use business credit and business line of credit simultaneously is Let's just say you start off business credit cards, you spend 40, 50,000 on these business credit cards after 12 months of 0% interest, it start going back to 20 or 30% default, whatever the case might be, right? What you can then do is use the business line of credit as a refinancing option to pay off the business credit card. And now you buy yourself another like four or five months of very minimum interest, right? Um, to recoup your money and pay off that business credit or business line of credit itself, right? So look at it as a way of like circulating debt to a different product over and over. It doesn't necessarily have to be business line of credit, but let's just say your business credit cards, you the 0% introductory period is coming out, but you still have balances on there. Instead of having to pay that default interest of 20 or 30%, you can move that money to another business credit card and buy yourself anywhere between 12 to another 15 months of 0% interest, right? Um, it's a little bit risky, I would definitely say. So that's the disclosure, but you want to be strategic about it. You want to make sure number one, the investment that you're making on is currently cash flowing enough to cover those minimum payments. But keep in mind, is the way that you structure it correctly and making sure yeah. that whatever investment. Let me ask you a question, Felix. Um, yeah. Just because there's no there's no interest rate, isn't there still a fee? It really depends on okay. the process that you use. Because fees and interest those. rates aren't the same thing. Those are different things, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
the fees to actually extract money from your credit cards really comes down to the process that you use. So one process I like to use is my company B, I will have company B send me an invoice. I will use the 0% business credit under company A to pay for that invoice on how much I want to liquidate. Let's just say I have a deal coming up that I want to do a fix and flip on. Down payment is $30,000. I have a 5000 credit card credit card a zero percent interest for the next 12 months i use thirty thousand dollar of that to pay for the invoice now that money get deposited into company b and then i would either have that money wired back to company a or just deduct it from the checking account to go into that fix and flip for example so that's one way you guys can process and uh, liquid a business credit card without having to do any cash advance because cash advance, once you stick your credit card in, into that ATM, you're automatically being charged 20% interest on a daily basis, not on a daily basis, on a monthly basis. And that really pretty much defeats the entire purpose of leveraging business credit cards at low interest in the first place, right? It really comes down to the process that you use that really matters on mitigating the risks or the fees that's associated with it. But that allows you to get the money out of these business credit cards to invest into real estate, for example, right? Love it. Awesome stuff, guys. This is great. Felix, thank you again for being here, man. This is cool. It's good of course, stuff. Of course. I know we're short on time. We have like five, five to 10 minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all Not good. Then? We can go a little okay. longer, man. This is all super educational. I just didn't want this to go two hours. That's That's all I meant. Okay. Okay. We'll keep yeah, it yeah. for another 15 minutes. I'll try to bang through as much as I can. Cool. No problem. And guys, if you got questions, save them till the end. So Felix can, can rock and roll here. Cool. So again, when we lay out everything in kind of like a larger game plan, number one, you want to make sure your personal credit is as optimized as possible, as ideal to what the lenders want to see in the first place. Right. And that's by having five personal accounts, two years of payment history, 700 above FICO score, and then less than 30% um, utilization across all of your accounts. Number two, in order to really take advantage of the business credit cards, you need to have an LLC in place. And the way that you structure your business is very important because let me tell you one thing, banks hate it the moment that you mentioned that your business is in real estate. So that's where a lot of people really kind of like fell off the crack on that. And I would recommend when you structure your LLC in the first place or create or incorporate the business in the first place, you want to put yourself or classify yourself under the ind industries like consulting or e-commerce or management, for example. You never want to put real estate, financial services, um, or obviously marijuana, any of those shady industry um, in itself, right? Because again, real estate industry as a whole is seasonal it's not too sustainable in their eyes and they're willing to lend to other businesses with higher margins and a lot of times management consulting or e-commerce or even retail businesses is the one they typically like to lend to the most so that's why it's so important when you guys set up or incorporate the business to not list it on the real estate that really comes to from the name itself you never want to name it david's you know, real estate group, for example, to say David's Consulting LLC, for example, right? <clears throat> so those are kind of like the key things that they look for. Number two, they look for the industry that you place yourself in. So that's where the NICS code, N-A-I-C-S code, which is a classification, classification code that the bank uses to understand what industry you're doing business as is important. So you want to make sure you do your research on that ahead of time, right? You want to then start building relationship once you incorporate your business with big banks like Bank of America, U.S. Bank, Wells Fargo, Chase. Those are great relationship banks that offer pretty decent rates on their business card cards, high limits on their business card cards, and potentially even their business line of credit. So I recommend starting those relationships by either applying for those business card cards or opening up a business checking account with them. Again, the deposit accounts, you want to fund deposit accounts, you want to put 5k minimum in there, but it shows that you're an active user or active customer of their um of their institution. And therefore, that's where you start getting offers, or you tend to have a higher chance of getting approved for their products moving forward. Right. And then last but not least, this is where we actually start preparing yourself or you to apply for these sort of products in the first place. Right. So just to give you guys a quick example, like this is one of the real estate investors that we worked with in the past, but basically he went through two rounds of different funding. The reason why we apply for seven to eight credit cards in one day is because each banks have different underwriting criteria or guidelines. 
Some of them are inquiry sensitive. Some of them, they don't really care about inquiries. So that's where we essentially place the order of the banks that we apply from. The reason why we focus on Chase first is because we have Chase relationship managers that would go above and beyond and get in the limits that you guys are asking for, right? So for example, if you're a brand new business owner, a lot of times if you were to apply for a business credit card yourself, you're probably going to get five to $10,000 limit. By leveraging what we call a relationship banker, which is something that you need to build over time by speaking with branch manager and making sure that you build a relationship with them, they're able to go above and beyond for you and actually get you higher limit business credit card right off the bat. So that's where the key is, is really finding those business relationship managers, finding those connections, because these people is going to help you with your funding as, you know, um, down the line as a customer, right? So when we actually apply for these seven different credit cards or eight different applications in a given day, we are keeping track of the different bureaus that they pull from. So keep in mind, every credit application that you apply from, dependent on the bank, dependent on your state, they pull from different credit bureaus in the first place. Sometimes they might pull from all three. Sometimes they might pull from one. But for example, Chase, they only pull from Equifax, right? So now I know the next set of banks that I apply for, if they pull from Experian, they're not going to see that I apply with Chase initially. Therefore, once your inquiries start stacking up in the different bureaus and you know where the banks are pulling from, you have a higher chance of getting approved because you're not actually stacking all of those inquiries under the same bureau every time. It's spread out different bureaus in the meantime when you apply for these applications. So you're basically what you're doing is playing Tetris and you're making sure that the other banks wouldn't see that you've been applying for other funding in the meantime and you're taking advantage of that reporting and how it works, right? So starting with those banks, right off the bat, 130,000 approved, second round funding, we focus more on business line of credit, got him a total of 312,000 approved. Now keep in mind, 80% of that 312,000 is 0% interest, meaning he can take that 280,000 to invest in multiple properties, renovate it, have it cash flowing, and only make the minimum payments on those accounts in the meantime, right? Another quick, yeah, sequence. So a sequence is, again, the order of cars that we apply for, the order of the banks that we apply for, right? And the type of products that we apply for. It's number one, we help them apply for a business credit card, business line credit with Chase. That's already 70,000 approved. And then we work with Bank of America. Bank of America tends to be kind of like the second and the third bank that we apply for after Chase, right? So the top five banks would be US Bank, American Express, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and Chase. But we apply for Chase first, and then Bank of America, and then Wells Fargo and the U.S. Bank, and then we work our way down to banks that are, that are less sensitive to the amount of inquiries that you have and don't really care too much about your credit score as long as you're above 700, but it really comes down to the requirements that they're looking for in the first place, right? So just want to quickly go through this with you guys, just give you guys some examples, um, but I know we're limited on time, so I just want to make sure I answer any any sort of like Q&As that we have. I got a quick Q&A. Can yeah. you help us get business credit? Absolutely. Okay. Wow. As long as your personal credit That's is good. That's the question that I, everybody should be <laughs> thinking, man. Holy cow. Okay. <laughs> Guys, in the chat, I've added a link. If you've joined, the, the weird thing about Zoom is if you joined after the chat, it doesn't show you the previous chat. So I'm going to add it again. All right, mm -hmm. guys, click the link right here. And this link right here is going to take you to a page that is going to give you the opportunity to book a call with Felix and his team. But well, what happens when they do that, Felix? Yeah, so basically one of our team members is going to sit down with you, really understand where your personal credit and what your angle is in terms of funding, right? Rather, you're going to be using it for real estate, for you know, other purposes will actually give you a game plan initially. So you can, it's more educational. We want to make sure that you understand how the process go and whatnot. And then if you're interested in working with us, that's when you can sign up with us. Uh, we have a special partnership with you guys where we don't charge anything upfront. It's really based on a percentage on how much we're able to obtain and get you funded on. Uh, so pretty much it's no risk on your end, but the more funding that we're able to get you, uh, which is great. We also give you an educational program just so you guys are educated on 
you know, building the foundation, understanding different leverage points when it comes to, you know, the business credit and the and the credit world itself, right? And finance different financing options. Yeah. Amazing. I, guess, cool. I have a question. Go ahead. So back in March, I applied, like you said, you know, I, I applied for like seven credit cards on the same day and I yeah. got approved for all of them, right? The right. mistake that I made was I did not apply for Chase on that day. Mm. Uh, it was a soft month. And then uh, three months down the road, I applied for Chase and they said that you have too many inquiries on your your credit score is, ex- credit score is excellent. Everything else right. is excellent. But you have so many inquiries and based on that alone, we deem you uncredit worthy. Well, they didn't say that, but that's mm-hmm. how I took it. Right. Is that fair? Like, I mean, you know, just because you have inquiries on your credit card, I mean, can you yeah. tell them? Because I wrote, I wrote a letter back to them or I emailed them and I said, uh, you know, really, this is the criteria that you're going to filter me out on. And yeah. they said, well, I'm sorry, it's the machine that uh, we have an algorithm that determines that. And I'm like, can I speak to someone? They won't let me speak to someone. So I'm thinking, like, if I don't have a personal chase credit card will i be even eligible for a business chase credit card uh yeah how, you, how does that work yeah you, you you definitely are that's why the key point here is having a relationship banker which we have access to because these are people that you're actually going do a different underwriting department you're not going through a standard algorithm as yeah. compared to you submitting the application online right um so the workaround for that is having a you know, relationship manager at one of the Chase uh, departments, which we have access to. And then number two is the way that we position the um, submitting those application is, let's just say you apply for like seven to 10 banks at once, you get approved for all of them, right? On the business side, if it doesn't report on your personal side, you are eligible to remove those inquiries, right? So that's how we prepare you for another set of banks uh, with seven to 10 other applications, well, another set of banks that internally they don't have access to your data on, but they only use your credit report as a standard procedure to evaluate your, um, yeah, your credit score and whatnot. So what we do is actually wipe those inquiries off and then take that new credit report with no inquiries on them. Even though you apply for that seven to 10 application, you got to approve of it, take it to another seven to 10 banks, and they're not going to have that same excuse anymore saying, hey, just because you apply for these many banks and whatnot, because the inquiries have already been wiped, right? So we actually wipe those inquiries off of you, but we make sure that we apply for another set of banks that don't have internal information about your credit score or your credit report. Oh, so you can take off the inquiries of my personal credit report? Yeah. uh, Really? Yeah, so that's something we tested over and over with different clients. And that's what, how we're able to go through another round of funding. Because a lot of times, like you said, that's what people run across. It's just like you're stacking all these inquiries on your credit report. And if you take it to a different plan and try to apply with them, they're going to decline you just because you have great credit score. You're, you have way too much inquiries recently, meaning you apply for way too much credit in a small given amount of time. The way that they look at it, it's just like, okay, are you in a bad financial situation? What's going on? Why are you doing this? Therefore, you're pretty risky in our eyes. Within our algorithm, we're not going to approve you. But if you know how to manipulate the credit score and remove those inquiries, then you're pretty much starting from scratch or you're starting fresh, right? And there's no excuse for them to kind of decline you. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I didn't know that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So. Any, any other questions, guys? Guys, this is awesome stuff. Felix is a busy man. Let's act, let's make sure we ask all the questions that we have. Also, I highly encourage you all to book a call with Felix. Learn more about how he can help you. The first house I ever bought that I ever rehabbed, I used credit cards to fund the rehab. And still to this day, I fund probably 20 15 to 20 percent of my rehabs on my business credit cards sometimes even more i mean and i'm not just saying 15 to 20 percent of every rehab i'm saying 15 to 20 percent of the entire mm-hmm. rehab budget right for some of my properties that i'm using the burr method on so on and so forth so this is really really great stuff felix thanks again for being here and guys and girls ooh, that fire looks cozy man oh man <laughs> I got to get home and make me a fire. It's freaking freezing here today. Holy cow. Uh, But yeah, 
it, we got we got a couple more minutes here, of course. I want to respect everybody's time, and I definitely, of course, want to respect Felix's time. But if anybody has any more questions, guys, this is the time. Let's ask. Great slides, by the way. Yeah, thank you. And I'll make sure to drop the PowerPoint for you guys, too. But yeah, I really take advantage of the partnership that we have here. Um, you know, my my philosophy behind this is just to give you guys as much education, as much data point as possible so you guys can execute this. Rather you guys join or not join, I want you guys to at least get some sort of value out of this, right? Because it definitely changed my life for the best. It changed David's life, giving him the opportunity to scale a lot quicker, right? Um, so if you guys want to schedule calls, just click on the link. And then, yeah, one of our team members would pretty much give you a free audit, free consultation on how you guys can start doing this on your own too. Amazing. 50 to 250K in capital for your business and they do credit restoration services guys and girls everything <laughs> you need to get the financing you need i want to remind you all that i use this not only to rehab my houses but i use it sometimes to cover payroll i use it sometimes to cover my marketing expense now oftentimes i use it even when i don't need it because of what felix said earlier i want to get all these points so I just booked a trip down to the British Virgin Islands with five couples. We got a 59-foot catamaran sailboat. My flights there and back, if you include me and my wife's flights, it was almost $3,000. It was like $2,700, bucks, almost $3,000. bucks. i did not mm -hmm. pay a dollar of that, guys. It was all credit card points. So you 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 know I don't want to necessarily say you're a fool not to use credit cards because you could definitely you know if you're not responsible you can get in trouble but if you are responsible I am going to say it you are a fool not to use credit cards and then pay those credit cards off right away because of the fact that you don't get any points when you spend cash you just exactly. don't but if you spend credit cards and you pay those credit cards off you get points I mean I probably get mm, I'd say $5000 a year worth of free travel, free gift cards, free Lowe's cards, free Amazon cards, free Visa, MasterCard cards, points <laughs> towards travel. I mean, it's some years, if it's a big bunch of expenses, it's $10,000 free money. It pays it's for not itself, taxable for sure. income because you're not getting the money deposited in your account. Typically you can, you're going to take a little bit of a, of a discount when you do that. Mm -hmm. But if you actually use those points towards things, it's money that's not even taxed. So like the advantages are no brainer in my eyes, guys. So Felix, again, dude, thank you so much for being here. We kept it right at 45 minutes. Great work. Love I know it, love it. <laughs> you flew through that, which is awesome. Lots of Q and a guys, we got time for one more. Does anybody else have any more questions going once? Nick, go ahead. And you, you said when you apply for a business credit card to not put down real estate. Yeah, you never want to list yourself under the category of real estate, um, financial services, construction. I think those are the three biggest red flag categories just because our algorithm is trained to recognize those categories and instantly decline you, right? It really comes down to what's going on in the economy. If they notice as on a macro level, right, that real estate is not doing well, then they're less likely to lend to that industry as a whole. So you always want to place yourself under consulting or retail or even management. Um, those industries are usually more green flag and they tend to lend a lot more in that case, uh, higher limits. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. For no, that's that. a great, great point. What, Go ahead. There's First. another level down from there. You said that's the first level. Then there was a second criteria that they kind of looked into. Yeah, they also look at your projected income. So whatever your income is, you always let's just say you're a brand new business owner. And obviously, you're not making any income right off the bat. You still want to put you still want to be optimistic with what you put on that income portion and just put a projected income on that, right? So for example, if you're projected to make 200,000, but you're not making any money right now, you're it's still by law legal to put that projected basis on that state of income itself, right? Yeah. Uh, pretty good, thank you. Of course. Yeah. 
just just one more question. You know, when you said that you don't uh, identify yourself as a real estate, do you have to go back to your lawyers and change the thing on your LLC forms as well? Or is this just when you're talking to the banks? Specifically for business card cards, it doesn't really matter. But let's just say down the line, you apply for business line or credit or business loans. You never want to, you never want to have that LLC classified under as real estate. So what I did initially after knowing that plays a big component on how much funding I can get approved on and kind of the risk tolerance, I just went to my accountant or I went to, for example, ink filing and just did an industry change or a name change to not have any sort of real estate, you know, keywords in it or the industry itself. I changed it to a different category in that case, because what the banks are going to do is go to the secretary of state and look at the industry that it's, you know, that was initially classified as to double confirm that sometimes, right? So you want to make sure you get the principal down right off the bat or, you know, the foundation. And yeah. yeah. Okay. The name of my company is Microflipping Properties. Now that spells out real estate right off the bat. Yeah. Right? Uh, right. So what do I do now? Is that, do I change the name of the LLC as well? Or yeah, you I, can definitely do a name change or you can do a DBA doing business as under a different company. So doing business as under fix and flip, you can name it consulting. And then just anytime you apply for new business credit card, business line of credit, you can just use okay. that name instead. Right. While it maintains the same EIN number and the credit history behind that business. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Thank you. Of course. Sweet. Guys and girls. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Great call. If you have the ability to turn that camera on, please do. I want to get a quick photo. If you can't, that's hey. fine. No problem. <laughs> Give me an arms up. Yeah. Got it. Thanks, guys and girls. Have a great day. Book a call with Felix and his team, OPM Mastery. They're the best in the business. They can help you secure funding. Do it now when you don't need it. Maybe mm. you do need it. Do it now. But if you don't need it, now is the best time to get it. So when you come across that deal that you need to fund, you come across that deal that you need to rehab, when you come across something that you need to do, maybe it's maybe you've got to go spend some money on some marketing, send some mail, get an AdWords account going. You know, whatever it is, you have the ability to finance it. Also, start using these cards and paying them off, using these cards, paying them off. It's going to help you build more credit. It's going to give you more credibility, which is what credit is with credit the credit value. agencies. Mm -hmm. And you're going to start getting to utilize the, the free bonuses, the free points of money that you are already spending anyway. It's a no brainer. Felix, thanks again for being here. Guys and girls, signing off. Have a great day. We're going to do more of these free trainings soon. All right, guys. Take care. Thank, Thank you, you guys. guys. Have a good day.